Here with us in the studio today is CEO of the Hebrew City organization, May Golan, and Haifa University lecturer, Hezi Kugler, to help expand upon what the future holds in the next four years. Thanks so much for coming in, guys. Thank you. So earlier today, President-elect Trump made some very strong comments about his plans in the Middle East, especially in Israel. He's made a lot of promises to move the embassy uh, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem to tear up the Iranian nuclear deal, and he's even encouraging more settlement construction. Do you think that now that he's president or president-elect, once he's actually in power, will he be able to follow through with these promises that he's made? Listen, this is the first time since uh, 1928 where Republicans has not just won the presidency of the United States, but also has the majority in Krong, both in Congress and in Senate. So if uh, the Republicans will stay united behind Donald Trump, I believe he can, uh, you know, make all these promises and even more. Uh, if, if they're not, he can always, you know, uh, uh, do what, tr what uh, Obama did and, uh, you know, ask for, uh, how, how do you call it? Um, um, how do you call it? One second, an executive order. Yeah, I forgot. I'm not an American. He can always do that. But uh, you know, I believe that Trump is 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 going to stand behind his words because I don't see any reason he wouldn't. He supports Israel. Uh, he wants the safety of Israel to to continue. He won't force us to do something uh, that we don't want to do. And I I feel, I personally feel very uh, safe that he will continue the real friendship between America and the United States, not like we had the last eight years with Barack Obama. Has he? Well, I, first of all, I don't think there's a contradiction uh, between following the policies of the last eight years and not being a friend of the State of Israel. Uh, the relationship between the State of Israel and the United States is very strong, uh, sometimes despite uh, presidents or prime ministers or whomever. I think actually in this case, uh, the last eight years have actually gone to prove that even though personal relationships sometimes aren't as good as they, as they can be sometimes, Nevertheless, the strategic relationship and the shared values between the countries proved themselves, and the level of assistance to Israel over the last eight years has actually increased greatly. Um, having said that, every president, when he comes into office, is confronted with reality. It is true that Donald Trump is a type of person that may decide that he is one who can change reality. We've seen that. So maybe that would be the case here as well. But still, there is a reality in place to say that he's going to overturn long, uh, long-standing uh, policies in the U.S. Uh, and cause a virtual revolution uh, on the foreign stage. Uh, I think uh, is would probably be going too far. Uh, I actually, I actually have the impression that he's a fairly realistic uh, gentleman, and when he gets uh, into office and has to actually deal with uh, leaders in the situation as it exists, uh, he will be quite pragmatic. But yeah, he can make changes, for sure. All right, guys. Now, polls show that 70% of the American Jewish vote went to Hillary Clinton, despite all the many times that Trump claimed that he was a big supporter of pro-Israel and showed that he was standing with the Jewish uh, population and the Jewish values. Why do you think he lost that demographic? You know, I think there is a big, big difference between the Jewish uh, Americans here that live in Israel and the Jewish Americans that live in America. Uh, and you can see it. It's a fact that the, uh, Trump won in Israel. Over 75 percent in Israel has voted for Trump the people that could have voted. And uh, I, I really think that the people that live in Israel know the real reality of Israel and what's really going on here. Therefore, they would really want to support someone like Trump who will keep them safe and support them. Uh, on a big difference that the American Jews that live in America, I'm sorry, but are, are a lot of them are just delusional. And I'm saying it with great sorrow because they live uh, in great comfort and sometimes great wealth. And when they look at, at, uh, at Israel, uh, they think that there is a possibility for a peace process and we're not trying hard enough, but they're not living under the terror attacks, they're not living under the, the sometimes very horrible and hardcore reality that is in Israel. And they want to put this, you know, pink glasses and, and imagine that everything can be good. Therefore, you know, they can connect more to the Hillary Clinton and Obama, you know, uh, administration. But um, I really really feel very uh, disappointed from the American Jews in America that, uh, you know, just for their entrance, for, for feeling, you know, very humanitarian and feel good about themselves, support someone that won't actually uh, keep Israel safe for the long run. 
I think the Jewish Americans uh, have traditionally voted uh, most of of interests that are endemic to the Jewish American place in the United States itself. Israel traditionally actually has not been the number one issue that has guided their votes uh, with respect to candidates, although it's, although it's an important issue, of course. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, the values of the Democratic Party mm -hmm. have, have generally been the values for which Jewish voters in the United States have voted. I think in this election, it was pretty obvious that because of the uh, connotations of uh, racism, anti-Semitism, and so on, divisiveness in society, these are the sort of things that cause a great deal of anxiety uh, amongst the Jewish community, as well as with other communities who ultimately really uh, are immigrants, remember the immigrant uh, uh, background that they have, and I'm not surprised uh, that they would vote in those numbers for the Democratic candidate, but there was really nothing that was unusual here. It was the same percentage they voted also for a previous Democratic candidate, so it's not as if he quote unquote lost the Jewish vote. You know, it's he, basically, funny. He, ba he basically got the, it's very funny the same that he would say that because he's talking about the fact that uh, immigrants, illegal immigrants, Jews, didn't vote for Trump. And I know that the, most, the majority of the illegals that are Jews are religious, and there was massive support of, of religious Jews in Donald Trump. But the people that did uh, support Trump, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of Chaim Saban, the, the, the millionaire Chaim Saban, who really said horrible things about Trump before. He called him a crook, a thief, a liar, really horrible, horrible words. Um, I, think he, just, I think actually there was just locker room talk. What? I think there was just locker no, room that talk. No, was, that was yeah. staged. That was completely in front of all, uh, you know, very public, but very think, I, completely but I, but I, told but I, the cameras. I heard but, that he, but he apologized. Didn't he, he didn't apologize, no, no. no. <laughs> Neither did Trump apologize, though. But yeah, but... <laughs> no, he doesn't apologize. <laughs> yeah. But ju just to mention, you know, why am I mentioning Chaim Saban? Because when I'm thinking about this kind of, you know, uh, uh, very elitist Jews that don't support Trump, and support Hillary, those are the ones that unfortunately are very detached from the real people and the real public in Israel. They don't know what's going on here and it's very comfortable for them to, to choose Hillary. So I know a lot of religious people that actually don't have a legal status in America but they said we follow our hearts and if we will be banned for being illegal we will go back to Israel because we have to obey the law. And I can't tell you how much I respect that in, in American Jews that voted for Trump although they don't have a citizenship there. All right, guys. Well, uh, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see what happens now that Trump uh, is going to become president. Thanks for coming. He's now president-elected, but he will make his promises. Thank you.